Welcome to the Modern Woman Warrior Show. I'm Louisa Kate. Amber is off today doing some post-production on another video. We always miss Amber when she's not at the range or in the studio, but if it wasn't for her brilliance in post-production, our videos would not look like they do, and in fact, they would not even exist. If you're joining us for the first time, we'd like to welcome you here. If you're a regular and you're back again, thanks so much for being a loyal viewer. If you like what you see and hear today, give us a like, drop us a comment. We like to reply to all of your comments and we read them and take them very, very seriously. Our viewers are the most important people in the room, so we do listen to you. Also, don't forget to hit subscribe if you haven't done so already. It doesn't cost you anything, but it really helps us to be able to bring you the high quality content that you've come to expect from us. We want to take a moment to thank Ransom International for the multi-caliber steady rest. We really appreciate your support. Here is some of what is coming up later in this episode, so don't go anywhere. So today, we're continuing on with our quality content by doing some ballistics testing on different guns and ammunition using the FBI ballistics protocol. Last week, we led off with a show called Why Can't I Use My 22 for My EDC or Everyday Carry? Today, we're following up with a show about the viability of the 380 Auto as a self-defense gun and round. Now, many women favor the 380 Auto as an everyday carry for self-defense. So let's talk about some of the reasons that women like these pistols so much. First of all, pistols that are chambered in 380 Auto are generally smaller and they're significantly lighter than their 9mm counterparts. Two, the 380 Auto round puts out less pressure than the 9mm, so it generally has less felt recoil than similarity than a similar, similarly sized 9mm. Three, it's easier and more pleasant to shoot than the 9mm because it develops less recoil, and particularly when you're using plus P ammunition. Now, all of these things are really important because if it hurts you to shoot, you simply won't practice. And if you don't practice, you're not going to get any better. So let's go see what happened at the range and see if all of those naysayers are correct when they say that the 380 is not an acceptable self-defense round. Thank you again for Precision Firearms for providing much of our ammunition again today for this video. Okay. All right, so now Amber is going to do some 380. We're going to test some 380 and see how that does. So we're starting with some Fiocchi 95 grain full metal jacket. So this would be what you would use at the target for target practice at the range. All right, here we go. First shot. Don't forget it's got that grip safety. Okay, so we're out here. I just wanted to do a quick recap. We just shot our first two 380 rounds with some full metal jacket. So this is, um, you know, a 380 is supposed to be considered an underpowered round. So here we go. Our first one actually was a little bit misaligned on the rest. So it came through like this. There. And uh, it came through down here. And then it came through like this and exited the gel and came over here and hit our wall and went through a whole wall and half of the other wall. It, it penetrated this, but did not come through on the other side. Can you see so that? that's pretty uh, amazing. And at 946 feet per second, it's still subsonic. All right, so this is our second shot with the Fiocchi 95 grain full metal jacket. And let's see how many feet per second this gives us. Okay, so how many would we get on that one, Amber? 928 feet, uh, per, feet second. per second. Okay, and let's go see where it... All right, we're clear. It was, it ended up going straight. Didn't know, so that was number two. Do we want to go ahead and label it? Yeah, label that one one. 
one. I'd label oh. it up here. Right here. Yeah, that's where it one. exited. And then this one's two, but it's actually, hold on. Right, did it go right there? Is that it? It doesn't have a number look, on it. Right there, it, look, right at right there. Oh, look at that. Oh, look at that. What? So you've got 27 inches penetration there. So I put two and then put 380 next to it. Okay, so that's going to be, oh, look at it down, go, go down below. And there's no before. deformation of the round at all. Oh, wow. So in other all right, words. So that's it. This is why you don't use full metal jackets. 27, for, 26 and a half feet per, I mean, uh, inches. inches so that's really, that's, the, that's hitting the, the good guy behind him. Okay, so now we're going to look at our second round with that 380 uh, full metal jacket. So this one actually was 928 feet per second, and uh, it, it entered here. It came all the way through and went all the way to 27 inches. Now, that was really very cool. You could see that we used the multi-caliber ransom steady rest to hold the gun still while we shot into the gel but we were still able to aim where we needed to in order to get multiple rounds into each gel block. I have so much fun doing the gel testing and I was really surprised by how much the quote unquote underpowered 380 auto penetrated. The first shot was a bit offline so it broke out of the gel block after 14 inches and then it blew right through the interior wall behind it. Now what does that mean for us as far as self-defense? Well, it means that it could have gone through the person attacking me out of that room and still had enough velocity left to go through the interior wall of the next room as well. Now, the second full metal jacket shot stayed in the jaw blocks, but it really over penetrated. Remember, the FBI maximum penetration is 18 inches. This one penetrated to 27 inches. That is more than 30% deeper than the FBI protocol allows. Even a 380 auto that many experts claim is underpowered when you're using a full metal jacket projectile, it will over significantly over penetrate. I will say this again, you have every right to defend yourself against a lethal attack, but you have no right to kill or injure an innocent bystander while you're doing it. Okay, so look at this picture of the two 380 full metal jacket rounds that we shot. They had zero expansion. They came out at the same diameter that they left the barrel in, 0.355. Now, let's take a look at what happens if we use a self-defense uh, round in the 380. These are Creedmoor XTP rounds, and we'll be looking at how they stand up to the FBI standard. Let's see what happens. All right, so now Amber is going to do some Creedmoor 90 grain XTP hollow points. So we're gonna see these should expand when they um, on impact, and so the theory is that they shouldn't penetrate as far as the full metal jacket. So let's see what happens. That was 1,077 feet per second. 1,077 feet per second. Okay. okay, let's see what it did here. Wow, okay, oh, so wow. it was a little bigger coming in. Oh, it sure didn't. Look at this, it did expand. You can see how it expanded, and it's at about right at, well, 11, not quite 12 inches. That's incredible. It's a little less than 12. We are really starting to get some interesting data here. The first Creedmoor 380 XTP went through the chronograph at 1,077 feet per second and penetrated just short of the 12 inches at 11 and 3 quarters inches. And the bullet expanded significantly from 0.355 to 0 0.50. Now that is 1.4 times the original diameter of the bullet when it left the barrel. Although that is less than the factor of 1.6 that the FBI specifies, it's still pretty significant. So let's go back to the range and see how the second Creedmoor XTP does. Okay, so here Amber's gonna do our second shot with the Creedmoor 90 grain XTP hollow point. 
ready? Yep. That was 1,027 feet per second. Clear. Yeah. 1,027. Right, let's check it out. Okay, we can see where that, oh, it, it penetrated just a little bit more, right? 12 and a half inches. Oh, sorry. 12 and a half inches. So that one would be within the FBI ballistics. So this one went to about 12 and a half inches. And, you know, there's a lot of people out there that will accept 380 and say that 380 is a defensive round. And I actually carried a 380 when I first started carrying concealed. But when I started to do the research on my own and we're getting ready to do the nine millimeter, then you'll have to decide for yourself. I carry a nine now instead of a 380. This is why the um, people will consider this to be an okay defensive round. That was really interesting. Now, when we came home, we had to extract all of the projectiles out of our gel blocks. Remember, one of the full metal jackets went through the gel and penetrated one and a half walls. So we had to take the wall apart to get it out. As you can see, there is a lot of follow-up work that's required to get all of the numbers that we're giving you. This is the picture of me working on a micrometer to measure the exact amount of the expansion that occurs with every round that we test. I would like to thank Precision Firearms again for their support. They provided us with today's ammunition, and this makes it possible for us to test different kinds of ammunition and different calibers. Thanks again, Chris. Make sure you go over and visit his website, and if you live in Savannah, head over to their store on Victory Drive. Okay, so let's review what we've learned here today. We tested the 380 Auto 95 grain Fiocchi Full Metal Jacket round. The first round's velocity was 946 feet per second, and the second round's velocity was 928 feet per second. This gives us an average velocity of 937 feet per second. Now, although the velocity is well below the speed of sound, since it is a full metal jacket, it dramatically overpenetrated. The first round went through 14 inches of gel, exited the gel, and then penetrated three sheets of sheetrock. This means that it would have left the room it was shot in, gone through the next room, stopped in the wall of the third room. The second Fiocchi round stayed in the gel and penetrated 27 inches of gel. That's 30 plus percent over the penetration that the FBI recommends. As you can see, there's no deformation or expansion of the round that makes a full metal jacket 380 auto round a flat failure as a self-defense round based on our FBI protocol. Now let's look at how the Creedmoor 90 grain XTP rounds performed. XTP generally indicates an updated technology compared to rounds that are just labeled as hollow points. The first Creedmoor clocked in at 1,077 feet per second out of the muzzle of our test gun, which has a 3.67 inch barrel. It penetrated 11.75 inches in the 10% FBI spec clear ballistic gel. Now this is just a quarter of an inch below the FBI spec. So let's look at the expansion. You can see as I pull the projectile from the gel, there is a significant amount of expansion. When I put the micrometer on this projectile, it measured 0.50 inches. This is an expansion factor of 1.4 times the diameter of the original projectile. Now the second Creedmoor was clocking in at 1,027 feet per second out of the same test gun. It penetrated to 12.5 inches in the same 10% FBI gel. As you can see, the second Creedmoor also expanded significantly. When I measured it with the micrometer, it measured to an almost identical expansion factor of 1.4 the original projectile diameter. So what's the verdict? Well, we learned that without question, Full Metal Jacket 380 Automatic Ammunition is absolutely the wrong choice for most personal protection applications. The overpenetration experienced in our test proves beyond any doubt that you could easily have an overpenetration on a solid hit on an attacker. This could go through them and, God forbid, hit an innocent bystander or a family member. So use your less expensive Full Metal Ammo for the range and buy high quality self-defense rounds for your CCW. 
I would like to thank Ransom International again for the multi-caliber steady rest. You have been so supportive of us from the beginning. If you like what you see and hear on our channel, please head on over to Ransom International's channel after we're done here and give them a like and hit subscribe for them as well. It really will help them out. We also learned that even high quality self-defense ammunition in 380 auto is at best a marginal self-defense round. Our Creedmoor 90 grain XTP rounds averaged a surprising 1,052 feet per second between the two test shots. Although this is a subsonic round, it still has a significant punch for a 380 auto round, delivering 225 foot-pounds of energy at the muzzle. Because the two rounds tested averaged a respectable 12 and a quarter inches penetration in the gel block test, that level of penetration barely creeps over the minimum amount of penetration accepted by the FBI protocol. Now, as far as the expansion of the rounds, both XTP rounds expanded by a factor of 1.40 over their original diameter. This is significantly below the FBI standard of 1.6 times the original. Now, this leads me to believe that in a best case scenario, the 380 Auto is a marginal self-defense round, even if you're using a good hollow point or self-defense uh, defensive round. Now, keep in mind that we shot these rounds straight into the gel blocks. We didn't even put any type of clothing barrier between the gun and the gel. I'm not sure how much a t-shirt and a sweatshirt would change these results, but I'm pretty sure that a heavy leather coat or a jacket might significantly decrease that marginal performance that we documented. Where does this leave us? Well, a 380 Auto with good defensive ammunition is a better self-defense platform than any 22 Long Rifle or 25 ACP, but it is far less than ideal. On the other hand, if you have a physical issue that limits you to the weight and recoil of a 380 Auto and you can shoot it well, then for, uh, with good self-defense ammo, it's very possibly the best choice that you can make. If that is the case, then practicing becomes even more important. To a great extent, the term stopping power is a myth. The thing that really matters once you get up to the load like a 380 is shot placement. Now, this is the most important factor whether you're shooting 9mm, 40 caliber, 10mm, or even 45 auto. But it's even more critical if you're using a caliber that's marginal for self-defense. Finally, another factor to consider is the frequently 380 autos are fed through a single stack magazine. My Smith & Wesson 380EZ that I carried for about a year holds eight in the magazine and one in the chamber. My Walther PDPF, which is frequently my EDC today, holds 15 and one. With a 380 and a limited magazine capacity, you simply have no shots to waste in a defensive encounter. So the verdict on the 380 is a self-defense round, a very limited thumbs up. If your physical abilities or other situation gives you no choice, but if that is the case, then train smart. Use situational training and train often. Your life may depend on your ability to put fast, consistent shots on the target under pressure. We certainly hope that you enjoyed this today as much as we enjoyed bringing it to you. Thanks again to Precision Firearms and Ransom International for your support. Please give a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, and don't forget to leave us a comment. See you next Tuesday.